If you just look right here at a small point at arm's length for about 30 seconds, you'd actually get this noticeable feeling of focus and attentiveness. It's crazy, right? It actually really works. That is just one of the three steps in my pre-focus ritual that helps me get in the zone and helps me take on the big tasks. I said three and there's technically more, but there's a fourth one I'm gonna feature in the end of this video and it's a little controversial, but if you make it there, I'll let you know what it is. You do have a focus ritual, don't you? No? Okay, well, even if you do, I'm gonna explain it. If you watch an athlete play, if you watch athletes play any sport, you're gonna see them do some very interesting, peculiar things before the game starts. For example, in basketball, Stephen Curry and uh, LeBron James both have their own individual shenanigans that they do before the game starts. Oh, yeah! The Hakka All Blacks, they do this crazy war dance to intimidate their enemy and get themselves hyped. Uh, and also hockey players. They Hockey players. I don't watch that much hockey, but as you can see, they do some pretty wild things, pretty interesting things. The whole point of a pre-game routine is to get yourself primed, get yourself to show up at the higher level that you need to to take on what you need, to, what's in front of you. That's what we do with pre-focused rituals. Same thing. We just instead of a game, it's a workout. It's a, so uh, unless your work is playing games, then essentially it's one and the same for you. And now athletes do this because, and they do it regularly. So you'll see Steph Curry do the same thing before every game. LeBron James doing the same thing before every game. And this is crucial because they have entrained themselves to associate these actions with uh, raising themselves to a higher level. They want to align their mind, their body, their spirit, their everything into this optimum state. And that's all we're trying to do with our pre-focus ritual. It's all about putting myself in a mindset so I can take on what's in front of me. So, on to the ritual. Before every work bout, I grab a pair of headphones and I pop on some 40 Hertz binaural beats. Now, you don't need to use any spe special fancy headphones. You can have any headphones that both sides, as long as both sides work, you can use those. Binaural Beats is super simple. You pull it up on your computer or your phone and you press play. And you just do it for five minutes before your work session or you can even do it during your work session. It's an evidence-based way to increase just your level of dopamine in your head. But for me, these Binaural Beats don't really have a noticeable kick, if that makes any sense. But the ritual of putting them on and listening to this boop, 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 boop sound in my head for some reason gets me in a slightly more elevated zone, a more focused and narrowed zone. It helps me sit down and do the work. It's just part of the ritual now. Like a lot of these protocols, I got them from Andrew Huber Mint's Focus Toolkit, and they've been working wonders and I've been having a lot of energy. On to the second one. The second one is back to the pencil, actually. So you don't need a pencil. You can use anything within arm's length. Sometimes it's on a screen, in this case, it's easy to demonstrate on camera with a pencil. So, like I said before, just 30 seconds of staring at a certain point at arm's length, and the smaller the point, the better, because you are picking a narrower point of focus. And the more narrow your visual field of focus, the more uh, just heightened you get, the, the more literally narrow your focus is. It could be a pencil, it could be a, like something on your screen. Another thing I like to do is pick an eye on the screen uh, you know, has a little dot on top. That's called that's called an idol, and I'll, I'll stare at that for about 30 seconds. And honestly, out of all the steps, this is the one where I feel the most outsized effect. I have a noticeable increase in energy, and there's just a feeling of I'm just amped <laughs> and I'm ready to go. So in this step, it's really crucial, um, but it is the most noticeable one. So stare at something for 30 seconds or longer. Try not to blink. And step number three is super simple. Uh, just before you start your work session, make sure you set a timer. If you were to just sit down and uh, you're about to start your work day, you got this really gnarly task in front of you and you're like, shit, this can take me like two, four hours. I don't even know how long I'm gonna be sitting here for. That's not a good place to be. Mentally speaking, it, you're kind of setting yourself up to face this really steep mountain. Unless that's your thing, it's not mine, um, I would recommend against this. The most important thing here is to set a time for yourself. 
for me, that time is a way to commit to, um, usually I start with like five to 10 minutes. And this is like a saying, I commit to like focusing for this small amount of time. There's different techniques to do this. There's the Pomodoro technique. I use a specific technique called the progressive Pomodoro technique. I make a video on it. You can go check it out later. So there is the last thing that I mentioned and I did say it was controversial. So I want to preface it with this. I'm not a doctor. Please consult with whoever the hell you need to consult to feel like this is safe for you. This is not advice to you specifically. This is just me sharing what works for me. I take two supplements uh, one to two times a day. I take alpha GPC at 300 milligrams and L-tyrosine at 500 milligrams. Now these two are supposed to work in tandem on the same system, which is the dopaminergic and your focus system. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what it is. I listened to a podcast once and it was in there. Uh, I'll put it in the description. The acetylcholine is for the sharpness of your focus and your ability to change that focus. And I think the uh, L-tyrosine is for the dopamine, which is to power that. The dopamine is what drives you towards your goals. Now I will say the effects aren't insane. Uh, they're quite moderate, if not minimal. I do get a little bit of a mood bump from the L-tyrosine, but that comes with a little bit of a mood slump uh, just a bit after, maybe a few hours after. And so I'm just putting it out there just in case you also take this and you experience a small slump. For me, it's normal and I ended up getting past it. Again, the dose that I'm using is quite low. I would skip this anytime I could because uh, taking too much of it could kind of fuck up my uh, dopamine system and I'm doing pretty well right now so I don't want to mess anything up. If I do need a little bit of help, a little bit more momentum in that day, uh, sure, your mileage may vary. Again, talk to whoever the hell you need to talk to for that. If you want to dive into more of these productivity tips uh, to get yourself going, I've covered binaural beats here and how to find the right ones and also the progressive Pomodoro technique. I explain how everything works and how you can get yourself into a really great state of flow. Flow is awesome. So we stare at this thing while the, the end credits are there, some of the end screen, you can go and click those now.